Awesome, so welcome to this next video where we'll actually start to set up the recipes tables and look at the Django ORM and get some of the actual data pulled into the web app. So previously we looked at the admin functionality and now we're going to jump into creating these models. So as always remember to start your virtual environment and then if you don't remember how to do that it's env scripts activate and on Mac, I think it should be similar, env slash scripts slash activate. And so the first thing we're going to do is open up models.py, this models.py file. And we're going to want to create some models. And so without getting too in detail in data modeling and things like that, and just trying to keep it higher level, level for Django, a model is essentially a table in the database and Django out of the box comes configured to work with any database essentially and you can even change databases or use different ones for local development and in your live site and it comes configured out of the box to work with SQLite you can see that we have this db.sqlite3 file so SQLite is a lightweight SQL based database system that just is file based. It's similar to MySQL or PostgreSQL, but those are a bit more robust and are actually recommended for something that's live and, and in production. But for testing and for local development, SQLite 3 will work perfectly fine. And Django also uses, has something called an object relational mapper or ORM to interact with the database. And it gives us a Pythonic way to interact with the database regardless of the underlying database itself, which is great. And we'll look into that shortly. But the first thing we want to do is actually set up our tables, our models for these recipes. So open up models.py. And you can see that Django already imported this models class for us, which we'll use heavily. So we'll create our own class called recipe that inherits from models.model. And each class will be its own table. And now we want to actually define the fields inside of the class. So we'll do similar fields to what we had in the dummy data. We'll use title equal models dot car field, character field, basically a text field. And you want to provide max length. And we'll just say 100. And I think the max length that you can provide is 255. It just kind of allocates space and memory. So that's the title. Then we'll also add the description. Description, if we can spell it. Models. Dot, this will be a text field. And so this is also a text-based field, string field, but it has is longer, can hold more characters. And then we'll also you create a created at field, which will be a date time field. And with Django, we can add a auto now add equals true parameter so that whenever an item is created, this, this date will, will always will be generated. So it'll have that created at mark. And then we'll also create updated at. And these are kind of conventions for database modeling in general, having a created at and updated at field so you can keep track of when things were created and updated. And we'll do the same thing, models.datetime field. But this time we'll just do auto now equals true. So anytime it gets updated, it will generate a new date. Save that. And so now we have these recipes with the title description when they were updated and created. But now we need to link them to the user, to the user who created them. So we'll first need to import from Django's built-in user. So we'll say from Django dot contrib dot auth dot models import user and this is what we had previously set up and now we're going to want to add a field author equals models dot foreign key pass in what other model we want to relate this to so we'll say user and then we also need to say on delete models dot cascade which essentially means if this if a user is deleted, delete all of the recipes that that user created. 
and it just works that one direction. Obviously, if we deleted a recipe, we didn't we won't want to delete a user, but it just works if a user is deleted, deletes all the recipes in the database. And a foreign key is a one to many. You can also do a many to many. So this is basically saying that a user can create multiple recipes and each recipe will only be connected to one user. If you did a many to many and you wanted many users to be able to create many recipes and each recipe to be associated or have many authors, you could use many to many, but this makes sense for now. So perfect. So this is the model set up. Now in the next step, we're going to actually apply these migrations. So we went through this step before to migrate over some of the built-in Django migrations that come out of the box. So to, the, to do this, we're going to want to open up the terminal, stop the server if it's running, control C stops that, but ours isn't running, so we're all good. And we're going to run Python manage.py make migrations, all one word. Run this. And this will make a migration file. You can see it created this migration file, 001. And we can actually see this. If we go under migrations, 001, you can see actually what changes are being made. And initial equals true, these different fields. Each model automatically gets an ID. That's why we didn't have to provide it. But we won't mess with that. So, but this just created this file. Now we actually need to run this by going python manage.py migrate to actually run that migration file. And the reason that Django works in this way and that a lot of other systems work in this way is so that you can easily update and change the data and kind of keep track of what changes are happening so you don't break things. Because you know, things may grow and change as your application matures or changes. So perfect. It, it ran the migrations, so that is all set up. Okay, so now we have the data migrated over. Now we're going to look at the Django ORM and see how we can actually interact with the data. And so Django comes with a nice way to do this in the terminal. So all we have to do is run python manage.py shell, shell if we can spell that, and it launches this interactive shell here. And so now we can, from Django.contrib.auth.models, import user. And we can do different things with the user models and data. So we created two users before. So if we go user.objects. And now we can provide different commands and different ways to interact with the data. So if we type all it'll give us all the data. So we have these two users, user djvoc and user test. If you go user.objects.first, it'll give you the first user. If you go user.objects.last, it'll give you the last user. User. You can also use get, user.objects.get to get a specific item and filter by a specific field so we can say username equals djvac then we get that user you can also filter to get multiple objects so that filter id equals one this will just return one because there's only one user with id one but you can see that it's a query set so that there could be multiple and so we'll use this to interact with the data in the view and get the data displayed on the site but for now, we can type exit to get out of that. And so that's the Django ORM. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually create some recipes. And so we'll do this using that admin interface that we looked at in the last video. So we'll have to run the server. Python manage.py run server. And we can go to localhost port 8000. Bring this over here. And we can go to slash admin. And sign in with whatever credentials you had created in the previous video. And perfect, we're in, but for some reason we don't see the recipes. 
And that's because there's one last thing we have to do to get it set up. So we have to add them to this admin.py file. So if you open the admin.py file, this is where we add things to show up in the admin and manipulate how they're displayed in the admin and you can customize and make the admin interface more customized. But we'll just start off by first we need to import that model. So we'll say from this current location, import models. And now to register your model, you type admin, which gets auto imported at the top, dot site, dot register. Then we pass in the model we want to register. So models and then dot recipe. And now if we save this, our server is running, so it's just going to reload. We're going to pull back up the admin, give it a refresh, and you can see that we have this recipes showing up. So now we can click that, and we currently don't have any data, but we can create some. So let's create a recipe. Let's just say chicken piccata. We'll say thinly sliced chicken in a lemon butter sauce. And then we can select the author, and it has this drop down, and we have these two users. So we'll select DJ Vak, and you can click save and add another. We'll add a few just to populate some data. Chicken marsala, thinly sliced chicken in a mushroom wine reduction. It's a pretty good dish. Select the author again from the drop down. Save and add one more, and we'll add chicken cacciatore. And this is like a braised chicken stew. And again, we'll add, uh, for this user, we'll say test made this recipe. And so we'll click save. And so now you can see that we have some recipes appearing and some data, which is awesome. However, they're just showing up as this weird recipe object. And there's a way that we can change that to make, make it something more descriptive. So if we go back to our code and open up the models.py file, we can add a dunder string method to this model. So it's def double underscore str double underscore and then pass it takes the self. And so now whatever we return from this function will it will be what shows up in the admin and in other places. So we can return self.title. So it'll just show up as the title. So if we save that and we go back to the admin and we refresh this page. Now we can see that it shows the title, which is much more descriptive. So perfect. Okay, so now that we have some data seeded in, now we can actually show it on the website. So if we go back to the code and we go back to the views.py, previously we just had this hard-coded data that we were passing in. But now we want to actually grab the data from the database. So we'll use that Django ORM. To grab it but first we need to import the model so we say from dot because the models in this current directory import and we'll just say models for now so we can access any model and then in the home function we'll say recipes equal models dot recipe and this is where we use that dot objects and we'll say dot all to get all the recipes and so now this will override what we pass in here so this context Everything here should be the same. The only thing we actually have to change is in the template. So if we go to home.html, we changed a few fields. So title, author, directions. I believe in the model we use description. So we'll say description. And then in date posted, we'll use updated at. So now if we save that and let it reload, we can go back to the admin page and just go back home. And perfect. Look at we see chicken piccata, marsala, cacciatore, the real data. But this date looks a little weird because it's a date time. So there's some built-in templating modifiers that we can use. So if we go back to the code 
Let me go to this updated at. I don't know these off the top of my head. I looked this up in the Django documentation. So just like which, with a lot of things, you'll be looking it up in documentation because it's hard to remember everything. But basically, we can pass a pipe character after the updated at, and now we can format, format it. So we say date, colon, and then inside of a string, we can pass the, the format for how we want this to display it. And we're going to want this to be displayed as month, day, year. So January 1st, 2022. So we'll say capital F, space, lowercase d, comma, uppercase y. So now if we save this and go back to the recipes home app and refresh this, now we get a much better looking date. So awesome. So this is cool. Now we have actual data that we can store and save and display on the page. And we've manipulated it in the admin. And so next we will look at actually setting up users, registering them on the site and letting them create recipes and manipulate the recipes that they made. So this is awesome. It's coming together well. If you have enjoyed this, be sure to give a thumbs up. It motivates me to make more of these. If you have any questions or are getting stuck on anything, just comment and I would be happy to help you work through any problems. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.